community fairs, what is an SDS? And in this slide, basically the service delivery strategy or SDS is the process with local governments and farms the opportunity to reach agreements on the delivery of services in an effective and cost-efficient manner to Georgia, to Georgia citizens. The intent is to provide a flexible framework for local governments and authorities to agree on service delivery or agreement arrangements to minimize any duplication or competition, or competition with local governments and authorities providing local services and provide a method of resolving disputes among the service providers regarding service delivery, funding, equity, and land use. So, SDS is basically started in 1997, got passed by the legislature in 1997, took effect in 1998, and since then, all the local governments in the state, from a county standpoint, counties and cities, municipalities in those, in those uh, counties have had to come up with a service delivery plan. We got our first one in 08. Do you remember the number? Our number in 98. Second one it was in 08, and then that's still the one we're under right now, which we should have adopted new in 16 based on the fact that uh, we changed our comp plan. And so there's several triggers to, to make you change your, or look at your service delivery strategy and see, see what it looks like. One of them is the comp plan change, and that's how we got this, how, how we got started this in 16. Um, any questions about the service delivery? As far as the intent of the act or what it's supposed to do. Any thoughts on SDS? Anybody have any other comments about what they believe service delivery should be other than those three intent? Basically what the three intents that the DCA says it's for? Some of, the, some of the services from the, from the OED SDS include the airport, the development authority, tourism promotion, conference center, park center, animal control, elections, federal, state, and county, and election city, building inspections, cemeteries, <coughs> code enforcement, state and county boards, municipal boards, um, hospital, prisoner housing from the state and county standpoint, prisoner housing from municipal standpoint, litter control, mosquito control, law enforcement countywide, law enforcement cities, public housing, parks and rec, so solid waste collection, water sewer, um, downtown development, drug abuse education, road maintenance, road construction. So all these are services provided to the cities, which are the citizens. Um, Criminal prosecution from the state standpoint, criminal prosecution from the city standpoint, uh, public health. So if you go through this list, they, all of these are listed out individually in the SDS. And each one says at, who's going to pay for it. And each one says where, they, where those funds are going to come from. For example, let's take, um, just take the airport for example. <coughs> The airport is a service, you know, basically a service we provide countywide, 
and this basically provided from the Boston Lounge County Airport Authority. And the funds that make that up are the um, funds that the city of Boston and the funds that Lounge County provide the airport authority every year. Okay, okay. From the hotel tax. From the hotel tax. That's correct. So but that's how the that's how that service is done. So each service, each one of these services that I ran off earlier is basically spread out on, the, on page two, depending on how long it is. And so basically, who's providing the service and how how that how that service is done. Any questions on that or thoughts on that? Anybody ideas? Okay. Um, you know, we spent a long time with I didn't make it. City Council at the time, the County Commission took a long time, and they come up with this agreement we had. And uh, it didn't take three years, but it took a pretty, pretty long time to get together. Um, and so, you know, I, the county, when we started this process, the county felt like the WDS SDS group we had was in pretty good shape. There was nothing we really wanted to change on. Um, the city of Austin, I guess maybe some other cities had some other ideas, and that's kind of where we are today. Um, we basically got to the point where we're, we're kind of stuck. So, is there any questions? Anybody have any questions about what SDS is and what it does and where we have to get to? I mean, as far as the process, where we have to get to? Is any questions at all about that before we move forward? What is, what is the issue that you're stuck on? <laughs> well, the issue that we're stuck on. Uh, the main issue that we finalized that we're stuck on was water and sewer. And what's the difference in opinion? What is the difference in opinion on water and sewer? Okay. From, from, from basically the county, right now we have, and in this case you gotta have if you, if you don't have one one local government providing the service, a two or more providing the service, you gotta have a max. Represent your service area. This, you know, basically on the map that shows. Okay, this this section is A, this section is B or C or B or how many people you got service. In this case, basically the unincorporated areas were the were the county government's water and sewer areas, and the incorporated areas were the were the, the municipal inside the municipalities were the directly municipalities water and sewer service areas. And so, in a way, we came up with an inter, uh, extraterritorial agreement that if somebody came to the city of Alaska and wanted, you, somebody from the unincorporated area came to the city of Alaska and wanted the city of Alaska to provide water and sewer to them, they asked the city, can y'all provide water and sewer to us? The city would turn around and ask the county, and if we didn't have any plans of running water and sewer in that area anytime soon, we would grant permission. In the, in the last 10 years, since OA, since this document came into effect, we've had two instances of this actually in 10 years. One was in Lake Park. For Lake Park, there were citizens inside the city of Lake Park that wanted water and sewer, or water or sewer. And they asked the county, the county said, yes, we provide it. So we asked the city, and the city gave us permission. The other option, the other option, or the other, option, the other time it worked was from the other time. The only other time it was ever requested was in Hay High. There were citizens in the unincorporated area of Hay High, or outside of Hay in the inside of the you know, unincorporated areas that wanted water and sewer, and the county didn't have any plans to run water and sewer over there, so they asked the city in Hay High. The city in Hay made an extra territorial request, and the county granted it. So those are the only two official requests that I'm aware of in the last 10 years that we've had on an extraterritorial request. And both of them work like they should have. And, you know, the customer that lives in unincorporated areas wants water from the city of Austin, if that's what they're requesting, I'd have no problem. If, you know, if that's what they want, then that's, you know, we're not gonna stand in the way. The city, go back, that's, that's the county city. That's, that's kind of where we are on the SDS, and that's what the, that's, the history of water and sewer issues. The city wants an area outside the city limits so they can run water and sewer. Well, those citizens don't have any say so on the elected officials inside the city limits. It's hard for me to take a 
wholesale area outside the city limits and say, okay, that's going to be but also city and water area where those citizens that live in that area or the property owners that have property in that area don't have any say so on who represents them. Now it's different when the, when the customer, whether it's a citizen or a company or landholder, that wants city, city water or sewer for some reason in the other more areas and they ask for it, then I have no problem with them getting it. That's what they want. And that's kind of where we are. But that's kind of the biggest issue.
Who knows what should have been happening? That should have been an open door right as we made it. And, pardon? It should have been that quick. It should have been that quick. What year was that? And that was, uh, what, you've been here about 10 years now? 2008. Um, and it's those types of things that we get into these cushy pools between the city and the house providing water and sewer or the county providing water and sewer that we've had for us. Now, that's not to say every time. I think it's right. There's been a, a number of times where it went smooth just the way it should. But it hasn't always gone that way. And, and quite honestly, from what I have heard and seen too often when we're currently industrial process, people that we need to create jobs. So our goal has been let's eliminate the friction. Let's, let's eliminate that opportunity for a flashpoint. But if we just follow state law, State law, you know, if, if a company comes to us, they're going to be located outside their city limits. They want our water and sewer. And they're within a you know, reasonable distance between our existing lines and where their, their property is located. We can negotiate with them and run the lines up as long as we don't cross the county's water and sewer. We don't want to cross current lines that they have. That would be a number. But assuming that there are no obstacles that nature, we should be able to sit down with that short company and say, we'll be glad to provide it to you. Here's what's going to cost and here's what we can provide it to you. Instead of going through back and forth and pushing the pull that we've had in two many cases. And that is why the city of Alaska has been so bullheaded about trying to get this out of the way for economic development and opportunity and move forward. And we do feel like that State law is a great course to follow. It's worked all over the state. And that's where we're currently at with this particular issue. Do I have a comment before? Tim and I are uh, good friends and have worked long and hard in the trenches, but I beg to differ. Having been at the table with Martins and with the city, the issue of providing the water was minor. The creation of an island by creating the, the service area was a problem. And I think the distance between that came down to only a few feet, separating that to prevent there being an island created. When Martin said they needed the water from the city because, as Mayor Freddy said, the water in Valdosta is the sweetest water in the state, we agreed. There has not been a problem at all. There was a problem uh, when we were looking at an industrial development along the uh, inner perimeter who did not want to move into the city wanted to connect for uh, water and sewer, but could not do that. Even if we at the county said, I'll tell you what, we will hook up, we will pay you, you will get a customer. He can stay in an unincorporated area because that was part of the grant he was requesting. But that didn't happen. It became a point of contention. Now, there are a number of times that we have worked through some of these issues. But if people want to make it a point of contention, they've been very successful. Well, what I had a question about was, if a company did come into the city of Valdosta, or come into, just say, unincorporated Lance County, and they wanted the water system, and they wanted the city water system, would the county, if the, if the uh, say business requested, would the county say have any uh, um, objections to the matter where they were located that they could get the city water? Tim's com I'll, I'll answer that. Tim's comment referring to state law. State law through service delivery says that you have to have service areas. The contention that has been presented was that the city charter allows the 
city of Belfast to go anywhere within the state, within the county. That's true from a uh, from the standpoint of it being the city of charter. State law does not differentiate. It simply says you have to have certain areas. If the industry that you're talking about, Martins, requested to be in the city, under our proposal, the city would make a request to the county. We even said if you need it done within 30 days, it will be done within 30 days. It will not be unreasonably withheld. Approval will not be unreasonably withheld. So given the opportunity in both a higher and a park, I think we have demonstrated that that is, is possible and has actually functioned. Go back to your question. Um, I think if it's, you know, you know, we've all got a plan for our water and sewer system. We all have expenses that, that we put into them. We put money in these systems and we've got to make them pay for themselves. So it would be, I think it would be hard. I'm not going to say it's, it would be impossible. You know, like, but like I said earlier, if a, if a company came to town and said, we've got to have the city of Austin water and sewer system, there's not a county commission on this, this table that I can vote against that. That's what, if that, if that, Economic, if the development authority came to us and said, we've got this prospect, 300 jobs, they've got to have city water and sewer, I don't think it matter what we had as far as equipment or as far as infrastructure. I mean, if that's what they had to have to get that company here, I think, I think the place said, I'll find it, I'll let this people themselves, but I don't see any of us standing in there, standing in the way of that. Yeah, I agree with that. Why should it take 30 days? If I'm trying to sell something, I've got somebody coming in here and they want a uh, piece of property. And uh, they say, well, we want, what's, what's your order like? I say, well, we've got city and we got county. What you want? Make your choice. Shouldn't take 30 days to make that happen. Yeah. Shouldn't be going through the attorneys as counselor. Uh, Victor says, uh, there's, there's where our money's going. The 30 days is not unreasonable from the standpoint of the company coming to town. And it may, it may be. I mean, if y'all think it is, then we'll look at it differently. But I just don't think anybody's going to make a multi million dollar investment anywhere and not do their, you know, do their due diligence in 30 days. Thank you, everything else. Uh, One thing I want to ask, I was just looking at that the unincorporated area that the city, I know the city of Valdosta, we. Should I have the state support in the county of unincorporated areas with those roads and so forth that we have? Uh, is that the same area of, should I say, like the guidelines like for the water system? You know, the water system has a certain area that we Yes, but basically, the, uh, this, the county road system, there's, there's some county roads inside the city limits, but all the city streets are inside the city limits. So basically, in an unincorporated area, it would be the county road system. And there are a few miles, six more than a mile. So that is inside the inside of something we just found. So that's what I'm looking at. That where the city does take care of manage those roads. And if the areas where these business want to come in within those areas, would we also still have to, I guess, go through this task that the county can be uh, supply water to them if it's the areas that we take care of in my unincorporated areas. Well, you, no, I mean, if you, if you already have water there, then you can take care of it. I mean, it's a service. If, it, if it's already, if you already have that service, if that area is already in your service map, uh -huh. then you can take care of whatever you need. That's part of what I was talking about. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go back to what Councilman Vickers was originally question. If it's this easy, why is it a point of contention that this should not be a point of contention if it's that easy? Um, like, um, Mr. Weisenbacher said, it shouldn't take 30 minutes. If you have a company that's interested in coming to our area, we should all be on board. They want it. I mean, it's, it's not like we can, they can hire someone and people from the county not going to work. They, I mean, we should, be, we should be a uniform team. We should be ready to get this business if it comes to you. It shouldn't make a difference if we're trying to make our community strong. But, how do you recommend we have it? What's the process? What kind of process do you recommend we have to 
If, if we gotta have, we gotta have the maps. We gotta have okay. here. Let, let, let's, let's just take the maps out. Let's, let's, let's just take yeah. that. Okay, well, let's just say we have a business that wants, wants to come in. Okay. We should be able to already tell them the county and the city will do whatever we can do. If they won't say it for fine, they won't count it. We just want the jobs and we want growth. I don't care about who gets the credit. Right. And I think all the people in, this, in, in our community, we, that, that's what I'm saying. We, we, we still have a contention. We should be at a contention point if everyone's in agreement. That's why I say it has to be more to it than what we're saying. So I don't think we're doing the citizens a service if we're not telling them everything because there's no way that we should be at a contention point on something that we all in the room agree on. Everyone in here is agree on. So why is that a contention point? Let's go to the next point. Water sewer, for example, we're talking about. 
we started this conversation about duplication of taxes, making sure there's tax equity in our community. This is user service fees. It's, it's not taxes. So our charter says, doesn't, it, our charter says that if someone decided they wanted a fire service, a police service, then yes, we can have a discussion with them about annexation. It's not about board, it's not about service delivery. It's what our charter actually says. If you don't mind. Yeah, and an annexation only occurs if the property is contiguous to the jurisdiction. So, I mean, if you've got a property owner that is within a parcel, like the example you brought up, they came to the city of Fayhara, they requested annexation, they were contiguous, they were within uh, a, an ability for us to simply just come right out and service them, that would be a logical example. Yeah, you know, originally when I attended some of the first meetings, I think you said quite early on exactly what we're asking for. We've got a prospect. They want city water. Why in the heck does it take 30 days? I'm telling you, folks will walk away in a 30-day period. Not everybody. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about subdivisions or places. I'm talking about economic prospects that we need here in our community will walk away. And I'll be like Joe, I'm gonna say there's been more than two of those in our community. There's been two officials in this since this policy came, came about. Well, there's been two extraterritorial requests since this policy came about. But the, the, third, the 30 days, the 30 days is not mandatory. The 30 days is the maximum. Well, we could have a meeting the next night. If y'all if y'all request it, we could have a meeting the next night and approve it today. But I think there's got to be some kind of approval process. Maybe. We meet twice a month, about 15 days. We meet every 10. What would you suggest? How much time do you need before the industry walks away from us? Okay, so let's take the 30 days out completely. It's just got, we just got to have a meeting vote on it. I mean, that's, that's really good. I mean, we got to look at, you know, from a standpoint of if, if we've got plans, we've got water, we, say we've got an area that's just outside the city limits, we're planning on running water to it. And then y'all say, we're going to run over there too, but we've already maybe structured, but you know, if, if that's the case, we can change. But at the same time, if we've already got bike running with the rock bike there, it's a little bigger. Right? Right. Okay. Look, I agree, there's got to be a process. I mean, if somebody, if... Well, the state law is SDS, and you got to have areas. Well, there's litigation, and we and you're right. We can we can fight about state law. The law I don't want to fight about. I don't want to fight about. I don't. The law. The law is what it is. I think we have a consensus, like everyone said, uh, that we're really trying to resolve it. We just heard three commissioners, uh, the majority, of all the commissioners on board, we're trying to make this work. So I can say uh, unequivocally that we have a problem trying to solve this. But I do uh, think it's very important for us to also not forget about uh, the one thing we're the group, uh, the citizens. They put us in office. And so when we talk about businesses, we got to also think about what type of businesses. Okay? Because some businesses might have hazardous materials, environmental um, threats, what have you. Those are just things to think about. Because I learned a lot when I got on the commission. One thing I learned was, one, some people don't like dirt roads. I learned, two, you know, at the end of the day, some people don't want to be on city board. These are things that I learned, and I, and I have to be honest with you when I present that, because they vote us into office, too. And they, they vote us to make those big, hard, difficult decisions. So the type of business, as far as something to think about, that I can tell you anything you can do to talk. Before. I have a question, sir. You said this came out in 2008, correct? This is 2019. What if they hire, decide, they hire us growing, and we still hear bickering, city and last kind of, do we affect them with this STS? Like, like so my that. thing is, we've heard in a hour, Lake Park, from growing, just for us not coming to an agreement. And I feel that's wrong. Because things change. They do change. So we all need to come to an agreement and stop this bickering. Okay. Okay, I 
think we can all agree that we can all agree that we all want growth. We all want somebody that comes in that's got to have service to get that. So I guess my, my question is, what's the process? We've presented the process. This is the process. Is I think we have a lot of time between the DCA saying what we need to do. Well, is it between the city and the county? They say what we need to do, the DCA says what we need to do. And that's what we're doing. Sorry, I, I, I will be patient um, and I'll be brief. I don't think that the elephant in the room is the, the citizens. I think it's the litigation, these lawsuits. And the city of Ohio right now is suffering under sanctions. We almost weren't able to complete some of the water and sewer projects that we had going on, providing safe drinking water and sewer for our own citizens. Because the city of Bahasa and the Lowndes County could get it together. Um, if it, if it, the reason that we're all here today is over 30 days, that's ridiculous. That's a waste of everybody's time. So, Tim, I appreciate, I appreciate you using the uh, term bullheaded, but I think more than just the city is being bullheaded on this. And Mark, ev and, and Clay, everybody that you've handed this microphone to has said, follow the state law. The county has challenged the state law. They're holding it up. I mean, are you, do you speak for, this, for the county commissioners here tonight? Because there's pending litigation. So if you guys are agreeing that the 10-year renegotiation terms are appropriate, then you basically say something different than your attorneys are saying. Okay? Additionally, you're challenging the statute's constitutionality. You do understand that, don't you? I mean, what are your, are your attorneys suggesting to come here tonight and agree that, you're, that it's valid, that we should be doing this? Well, I, the, the question I wrote then when I started was, is it possible for us to come to an agreement tonight? Well, I assure you, Mr. Griner, your attorneys would, would say no. I'd love to have an agreement tonight. I guess the, the question is we've got to have a process. There's got to be, there's got to be some kind of process to go from one district to another. If that's not an extraterritorial agreement, what is that process? First of all, I wasn't aware that we were under sanctions at all at the moment. Are, are you saying that AHR is under sanctions for DCA right now? I thought you appealed the ruling on the sanctions. Yeah. 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 Now, we, I mean, graciously, the courts have deemed us not to be subject to the sanctions, but you appealed that right now. It's up to the courts. I just wanted to make a point that, that you're not technically under sanctions. You're suffering from no DCA money or anything. And our attorneys are asking for us to be under sanctions. So, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. The county has filed a lawsuit against the city. So it's not the city filing a lawsuit against the county. Those are things that we need to get out so people can understand. So let me give you, me give you my perspective and then I'll be quiet. Where your board of commissioners is in kind of a unique position because, for instance, Tim Carroll and I both represent um, citizens in either subdivision, for example. They, they have, Tim is their city councilman, they have me as their county commissioner. So the people on the other side of that city limit sign don't have anybody but me. So I feel like, you know, sometimes it's a challenge for us as commissioner because, you know, we, we do represent the cities and we keep that in mind. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I recognize and appreciate all those folks who live inside the city. Um, but I've also got to think about those folks who are in that incorporated. So for me, this whole deal has been, um, we talk about the, the intent behind the service delivery strategy is in fact the, the prevention of duplication of services. You know, we're, I've, I've spent a lot of time with the county manager and our, um, our water and sewer folks trying to determine where we're going next with our water and sewer lines. What are we doing? How are we tying everything together? What does our system look like? So when we talk about the city of Alasta, for instance, just being able to run their water lines beyond their city limit sign anywhere they want to, and that's basically what they said because the state law says that we have to have service maps. So when we send a blank map to the city of Alasta and say, show us what service delivery areas you want, show us what's important to you right now, and it's sent back and the whole county is colored in more or less, how do we plan? How do I make sure that 
sure that the taxpayers that I represent outside the city limits of any city are being represented. How do I know that, you know, y'all don't just, y'all have a meeting with, with Mr. Whoever from wherever that's going to make widgets and, and, and we don't, the mayor goes and meets with them at 5 o'clock one afternoon and promises the city water, you know, halfway to Hayhira and we're in the process of planning and putting lines in the ground and, and we don't get a say so about that at all. I mean, that's what I don't understand. I am not a proponent of trying to restrict growth in the city of Dallas. What's good for Dallas, what's good for Hayhira is good for all of us. Because we all win, and I agree with that. But I'm just saying, think about how the unincorporated area residents do when we're trying to plan for, for, for them and the growth of our water systems outside. What if Riverton came right now to the city of Alice and said, you know what, we're, you don't we, we, you even get a say so in this. We're going to start branching our water lines outside of Riverton. And, and then, based on our own rule and on our own ordinance and on our own whatever, uh, we get to we get to annex that property because you can say what you want to, but you know good and well that once you're serving a piece of property with Dallas City Water, you're not going to leave them outside the city limits. You're going to bring them in eventually. So that's the point. That I'm going to um, probably take up my full three minutes here. October the 7th of 2016, this is um, from Elliot, Walter Elliot, to the attorney, uh, to DCA. DCA Direct Legal Services will not prevent, preclude, state administered financial assistance grants loans permit from being issued in Niles County, whether it's Niles County's current department, verify search of industry strategy, revise or extend it. Basically saying that DCA cannot prevent this from happening. DCA then turns around on November 1st and says, therefore, since you have not met what you're required to meet per the DCA law, that we are going to impose sanctions on you and everybody within. Then, on November 9th, we get a letter uh, from Chairman Slaughter that states, However, the county is willing to endure these temporary sanctions in order to prevent long-term setbacks for citizens in the unincorporated areas. My question is, what about the people in the cities? Next, Mr. Elliott receives another letter stating, you have to contend the DCA requirements, basically. And then the last one is a state superior court ruling that basically where the cities have made a move to the court to hold sanctions imposed to um, be held during the pendency of this action, basically to lift it, whereas the county opposed it. So you got, the thing about it is, is that, yeah, we can, I guess, go around this merry-go-round all we want, but what it boils down to is, is that there's still that Trojan horse somewhere in there that there's a reason for this happening. And I don't know what it is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because if it's as simple as Company A, come on, congratulations, pat you on the back, here's your water and sewer, then let's move on. But according to this and what I'm reading, and you know, I, I you know, I'm a math teacher, I'm not an ELA teacher, but from what I'm reading here, it just sort of seems like to me that everything's about the unincorporated, the unincorporated. You know, and my thought is, is that what I'm trying to figure out is that, you know, doing my research is that everybody in the cities, Hayhire, Dasher, Lake Park, the five cities, Remington, um, we basically are up at that 152% mark of where we take care of all the roads in this, in this county. So, you know, I just, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I don't understand if it's that simple, why is it not that simple? You know, why are there sanctions? You know, why can't we, why, why wasn't something happening in 2008 or 2016? Why didn't something happen? If it's that simple. Yes, sir. I don't listen. Listen, the state water sewer is going to take a look at both of them. Under water sewer, the county provided a <coughs> process. 
that go from one service to another to another service. Does the city have a better process than that? The city has a process that we are allowed to, if, a, if an applicant comes to us and they want our water and sewer, and it does not, and y'all are not able to provide, or y'all are not able to meet the needs of company, whoever, whatever it may be, and we're able to, or a hire is able to, or whatever next city is able to, that they should be able to. You know, so, I mean. But no communication at all. No one said any communication. Nobody said there shouldn't be any communication. That's not, that wasn't at all. Nobody said that nobody's supposed to talk. Okay. We were just saying, we're trying to figure out, one, what's the 30 day thing? Why 30 days? When you're saying all it is is just a simple meet and vote. If that's the case, it's meet and vote. And the second thing is, is um, you know, the communication part. There is communication. I don't think that's been the help hold of is communicating. I don't think it is. Well, I can't speak for the mayor. I think so. You're saying if we come up with a policy and there's no ask, y'all can just do it. No, no. no I, I think I, me and Scotty's had this conversation. I told Scotty we ought to stand, you know, the courtesy of saying, "Hey, by the way, Company X has communicated with us. They want to situate themselves in Lowndes County area." But however, though, for some reason why, they, they want our water and our sewer, you know, are y'all able to provide? Can we provide? What can we do to get Company X in the building? What can we do to get them here? That's all that the care program really is. That's all it is. You can pass none of that from your TRL meetings. Those folks come there and they say, we want to come into the unincorporated area, but we want to see more. I mean, it's not like my call by the So I'm just curious as to what the, what's the hold of them? I mean, like, what is the... I, I, I'm new to this, so I, I wasn't in on this 2016. It should have been done this year. What is this agreement? All the agreement is basically y'all give us a heads up. They want to work. I'll, I'll get the county manager and email. I know. We've got, we've got to get a written down process. I don't like that. And that DRC, the DRC doesn't have the fault. They don't have the fault. I didn't say they did. I no, said I'm just saying that the CRC may know it, but that has to be done. Okay, so... But the point I was making, though, So can we nail down the process then? Yeah, we nail down the process. All right, good plan. Let's do this. Can I have a question? Do I just want to know if it's that big a deal or is it that major of the economic development or development or let them make it? Well, let's, let's start with the process first. Let's just, yeah. They're not just going to see you. They should take the full of eight to do this. Well, first of all, let's start off with communication. That's the key. Yeah. If you don't communicate, you ain't going nowhere. We have seen it in the paper. Sorry for the other thing. All right, so first base communication. Communication.
best person to answer it. But the Department of Community Affairs is the state department. Um, the, the head is appointed by the General Assembly. Uh, there's a lot of great information online as far as the different um, services that they govern at the state level. I think one of the biggest things that we see them for are grants. Our community development law grant process um, is a process that's overseen by the Department of Community Affairs. Um, but this legislation, of course, um, is one. So they're kind of a catch-all, I think, for things that don't fit in other areas of state government, um, and things that have a direct impact on the community. So I would really encourage anyone who'd like to know more about what they do to go to their website. The information that we provided tonight in the handouts all came from that website. So we're, um, the Georgia Municipal Association, as well as the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, both have their own tests. We're all familiar with those as far as service delivery goes. But being the DCA really is the uh, tip of the spear that we all communicate with. We pulled all the information that um, we are presenting here tonight from them. <coughs> Service delivery. Yeah, no, that's it. it. Look, look, look. And they said, we'll appreciate it how they're teaching us. And we have it done. So that's why they do the things that they're supposed to do. Because we have it done to us. Now, so we, we started negotiating. We negotiated in 2016. When, once we had the conference and plan change, negotiations started. We had a kind of Thank you. 